So, those that are interested, would y'all please come forward? And we can sign up. Huh? Oh, we have a sign up. Please come. Don't be shy. Sign up. All you're doing is an introduction. All you're doing is an introduction. All you're doing is an introduction. But what we all get When you hear the chime, you have 10 seconds. All right, we're going to ask all those who are interested, then we have a sign in sheet. Please sign your name so the whole thing is going to go with you. And then you have 90 seconds. And when you hear the chime, you have 10 seconds to wrap it up. All right. Are we ready to listen, ladies and gents? Yes. Okay. We want to, take it to this. We want to set the ground rules, so we want y'all to hear the ground rules. That'll let you know who's a good candidate if they follow direction. All right. So let's listen and give them the utmost respect. You introduce, we don't have to introduce you. You come up randomly and you introduce yourself. Let the people know you. If you please, please speak at the podium. Yeah, you just said that. Number one. 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 Thank you, Pastor, for the use of this church. How y'all doing? I'm Derek Hillier from the San Antonio Fire Department. I'm the son that you raised for over 34 years in this community. I see further because of the shoulders I stand on. I can't take full credit for who I am today. I owe some of that to all of you in this room. I know I've leaned on a lot of people over the years. When I first got in the San Antonio Fire Department, part of my agenda was to support my family. And then I found a way to help others. That's why I've been in the schools looking in the faces of many kids in our mentoring programs over the years. I've made responses to many of your houses and, hit, and saw you maybe at your worst time. Was able to help you the best I could. And I want to thank you for that opportunity. I shouldn't have to get up here and introduce myself. It should already be known through the works I, I've done. I know you can't get into heaven with, by works alone, but the works I've done should speak for themselves. If I have to reiterate all that to you, then I wouldn't be your candidate. But I think if you talk to your young people in your schools, they've seen me. I've been to many of your houses. I know this area. Four generations of my family have been here in this same community. I grew up right here. I've watched streets. The names of streets change. Bus lines change. Opportunity is displaced throughout a lot of communities. Talent is equal distributed to everybody, but opportunity we have not had. That's what, I, that's what I look forward to bringing for our young people, to give them hope. As a youngster, I like to go to school. I want to see their faces light up when they go to school. Thank you for your time. Good morning, how's everybody doing? Right. It's hard to follow that up. Nice. So it's the best your um, my name is Stephen Lucky, and I've lived uh, the same address for 29 years here in District 2, uh, San Antonio, Texas. Um, I'm blessed to live here. I see a lot of disparities within the community, but I also see lots of opportunity. Um, you know, I was able to graduate uh, from high school early. I was able to go to college on a scholarship and play sports in my community. And I was able to now start up a nonprofit um, promoting health and, and wellness within our community. In 2017, I ran for mayor. And I had a pretty robust platform. Um, and looking back on what happened in 2017, you know, maybe I should have done some things different. But my top five uh, categories that I want to focus on are education, health, environment, cannabis, and transportation. Um, I truly believe that education is key. No matter what your situation is in life, uh, they say if you want to hide something, put it in a book. And I think that we need to improve our literacy within our communities. Um, I've also heard the comment back there about uh, policing in our communities and the, and the criminal justice system. And how can we get more towards um, community policing and, and empowering our leaders within the community to help keep um, order? Health, our bodies are our temple. You know, we were able to 
come together here in this temple on a Saturday morning, and I think it's beautiful. I think this needs, I've heard people think that music needs to happen more and more and more, right? We need to be coming together. This is the time. But health is extremely important for us. We think about the healthcare system. We think about Medicare and Medicaid. My father right now is going through some health issues. And it's like, how can we take care of our bodies preventatively? Thank so you. thank you for your time. Your name again, please. My name is Stephen Lefty. <laughs> Next. 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 For two parts, one first. Good morning, everyone. My name is Walter Perry. I just live right down the street. Uh, I grew up in this neighborhood. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at a lot of people who, who raised me and gave me whoopers along the way. Um, I first started my advocacy back in 2009, started under the mentorship of Barbara Hawkins, when they, uh, we were doing the cross point things, and she was very influential in showing me the right direction on how to engage with, just not with my own people, but with the, but the whole community. So I had a chance to kind of see and observe and be a part of what was going on in the community. I started working at SAGE uh, for about two years, so I have an economic development degree, and my job was going into the community, working with uh, all the businesses in the Promise Zone. I worked with Beverly Watch Davis uh, when she was at, um, when she was working with Saha, and she had the Choice Grant, which helped a lot of the businesses reestablish themselves on the east side. I have a vision, and the vision for this east side includes every one of you. It includes shops, it includes walking space, livable space, clean streets, uh, places in our parks where, you know, our seniors can just go and just, you know, read a book or, or play checkers. I love our seniors, and I'm going to start by fighting for them and fighting for our kids. I see Selena Santabayans in the back. She has a boardroom project which works with young Hispanic uh, and black kids on being professional. I have the suit up program, which I've been working on for the last five years, and we have engaged these kids. Yes, and I want to be the candidate because we have some unfinished business, we have legacy, and I'm coming for my grandmother's inheritance. And so that's what's, that's what's going to happen right now, and I need you guys right now. Let's go get our inheritance, Eastside and District 2, now. Time. My name is Walter Perry. Yeah. I'm Chris Dawkins. Uh, I have a cane here because I just had uh, hip replacement surgery. But most of you, uh, I believe, here know me. I've uh, been in the community for some time. <laughs> Lately, I've been working in Lakeside. Uh, the reason that I'm running is to represent you. What's been done here today, I think, is the most important thing that we can do. We want to be able to hear from you. That is the most important thing to me, is to be able to have you be the one who is I'm representing. Been at Lakeside for about four years. We've done, I think, very well. We've got $2.3 million in, in drainage. We've got money for um, commercial. I think things are very well, but I also believe that there's some things that need to be done. Those things that need to be done are the crime in our community. I think we really need to address that. We cannot do low income housing, a lot of other things that we want to do with the crime being the way that it is. So what I'm asking you for is your uh, support for the appointment. I will be the one who will run um, in May and I just ask for your support. Thank you. I'm going to break stuff. I'm Liz Franklin. I probably will not run. But on the off chance that we don't have aggressive community engagement from whoever's going to be the interim and then the candidate that looks like our strongest candidate to represent District 2, I want them to know who I am. Because I'm engaged. 
and it blows my mind that I'm engaged on a regular and I can't move the needle one bit. We lag behind a D2. Violent crime, poverty, everything that goes from the east side goes to the northeast side. That's the migratory pattern. I'm concerned about my entire community. I don't care who represents us, but you better represent us. All of us. So, on the eve of the third, number one, number two, I don't like the idea that city council walks up to me afterwards and says, don't worry, Liz. Don't worry, Liz. We're going to make sure who we select will take care of you. What? <laughs> what? How does that work? Come on, Liz. <laughs> Look, people, that's exactly what the mayor said to me. Mm. The mayor cannot dictate what goes on in D2. Right. Bring your best to the table and let's get it done. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, hello, I wasn't expecting this. My name is Denise with the others Homer. I live in District 2. I live in Government Hill. I've lived and my family have been a part of District 2 for over 30 years. Some of you might know my husband. He's Dr. Mark Homer at Southeast Animal Hospital. So we live and we work in the community. It's not just District 2. It's District 1, 2, and 3. We need to work together. We need to know what's happening in District 1. It's going to affect us. It's what's happening in District 3 will affect us. Our property taxes are a huge issue. It's coming deeper into the east side. And that causes homelessness. Because people are removed forcibly because they're tenants and their landlords sell their properties to developers. Developers come and knock on homes and the homeowners move because they're offering <coughs> wonderful opportunities but then they move out. They can't buy a home for $150,000 they move out of their home to another location, they're homeless again. Mm -hmm. Or they're back starting all over. The one thing about my situation in my community is I'm involved. I don't go around showing my face, I'm just in the back. Yesterday I was in the senior center, the Global Community Center, and we had a wonderful opportunity to visit with the seniors. We celebrated Christmas with them. I'm a former teacher, so I have that background. I know education is important. I'm a little nervous right now, yes, but I have a lot to offer. I'm an artist as well. I want to encourage the young people to take advantage of their talent. So I really want to shine on every possible way, from the young to the old. And I just hope you consider me because I am part of the family. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Martinez, and I've been a resident of District 2 for 56 years. All right. I built my business uh, in District 2, uh, 621 Chestnut, where I lived, and then I uh, built a building there, uh, and now it's a distillery. It's <laughs> <laughs> an advertising company, my billboard company. Anyway. Um, my main concern for running, and I've always been a public servant, and by the way, I didn't get my GED until I was 65 years old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. But I did uh, have the honor of being on the Alamo Community College District for six years, elected by district two individuals. It was a at-large position, and um, uh, the ironic thing was I didn't have a high school education when I was elected. And uh, I was a swing vote on the uh, trustee uh, of the board. And uh, uh, I was the one that delivered the, the vote for the Palo Alto College. Uh, and so my concern is not having a hospital in our district, a right. large district without a hospital. 
we have to go to the north side, or the south side, or downtown. Ten seconds. But no emergency facilities could take care of our elderly people. Amen. And right. So uh, I'm not a politician. I try to do the right thing. Uh, I'm colorblind. Um, everybody matters to me. Right. Life is a life. And so, uh, I'm at your service. Thank you so much. Yeah, good morning everyone. My name is Lester Bryant. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be before you today. I was born and raised on the east side, graduated from Sam Houston. I lived in Washington, D.C. for about 20 years after high school and lived in Atlanta for 14. And one thing I can tell you is that there are east sides all over this country. That's right. And what I've seen work in those cities is something that uh, Sister Gabrielle mentioned is that we have to work together. And we have to have a vision, we have to have a strategy. Since I've been back in San Antonio since 2008, I uh, was president of the PTA of San Houston without having a child there. Um, also, I was involved in the Eastside Promise Neighborhood Planning Grant and then to help administer the grant. Uh, also, I've served as uh, vice chair of the VIA board. Um, and also with city council, because several of you mentioned and talked about budget. I have budget experience in the corporate world and also with VIA and also on the national board. And one thing that we haven't really touched on today is that in order for us as a community to move the agenda, we have to be able to build a consensus. And first, we have to build a consensus among ourselves. And then we have to be able to build, get a consensus from city council. And I have those skills and I have those ability in the private world um, and also the corporate world. Thank so you. thank you very much. Good morning, y'all. My name is Ron Head. Some of you may know me, some of you may not know me. I am also the zoning commissioner for District 2 at this moment. Um, I am taking this into consideration. I am a product of the East Side. I went to what used to be, or still is, Gates Elementary, mm -hmm. Roddy Junior High School, right. and a product of Sam Houston High School. Okay. My family has been here, I know, at least since 1952 in San Antonio. I am the fourth generation from the east side. As I went off to college, I left uh, the east side, served in the military, and when I returned back 20 years later, I was disappointed to see that the east side still looked like it did when I left 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. That told me that we had leadership that was not doing what needed to be done to keep us updated with North Side and South Side. My opinion, the East Side has been used as a dumping ground for projects that they don't want on the North Side or, or, or um, the North East, Northwest Side. What we need to do is have someone in office that can work with everyone within District 2. Not just Mankey Park or Government Hill, but Lakeside, Eastwood, and bring all of them together to work together. Yes, Coliseum Park too. My name is Brian Hill. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Rose Hill, and I'm a uh, born and raised here on the east side, and I've been uh, engaged with the east side for 25 years. I'm the co-founder of a 501c called Parents on Watch, advocating children's rights in SAISD. I started out when I was 22 years old here on the east side for children that unfortunately 
had problems in the school districts and we would mediate between the parents and the superintendent and it was a very successful program that ended and I retired from that. Since then I've been engaged on the south side. We brought in $4.3 million to the Paul Pytel Park. I established that for the children, unprivileged children that could not afford to play baseball or anything. And um, I was served on the SAISD Council PTA and I was on there for almost 15 years. Um, since then I have, uh, this is my second term as president of Government Hill Alliance. I'm happy to say that I was fortunate with Senator Menendez and our previous councilman of shutting down the uh, accent recycling plant there on uh, St. Gideon Street that created a lot of rats infestation, um, hazardous health to the people and the seniors, and we, we were able to success, successfully close that down. Um, I feel like, you know, um, I've been engaged with all the neighborhood associations. We all work together. We communicate. We have coffee once a month. Uh, working together and knowing the community and knowing uh, the issues is what is important. Because if you don't know the issues and you don't know the other <coughs> things that are happening in the different That's communities, right. you can't be successful. Thank you. Wow. Who said each side ain't got candidates? <laughs> they lied. Right. right. First of all, I want to say thank you to every one of you for being here and spending your Saturday morning. You have heard the people speak. My question to you is, do we need a round three for vetting purposes that we can ask specific questions to our candidates? If all in favor, just raise your hand. All right. We're on a short window. So we've got to set something. Can we get the candidates to their names again? So we can write them? We well, I, I would say sign in the sign that sheet. Sign in sheet candidates, make sure you sign on the sign in sheet. You have a good email, a good phone number. Since time is short, uh, we said for the uh, December 29th. <laughs> put that on your calendar. Huh? <laughs> That's the only time we have before the fourth. Mm -hmm. right. December 29th, mm -hmm. okay. we'll have a meeting and we can vet the candidates and you can ask some specific targeted questions. If you signed in on the sign in sheet, get us your email. If you can get some, uh, what is it, written video. questions or whatever, or video, if you want to do that. What time? What time? On the we don't have a time yet. That's why you need to be on the email, and we'll get it out to you like we did this time. But I want to appreciate each and every one of you. I'll get you in a second, Mr. Gordon. Appreciate each and every one of you and your time. Hopefully, you've learned a lot today. You saw the candidates. I, we will summarize what we went through today. We will get it to council to make sure that they know what we've, what we've come up with today. Um, Mr. Gordon. There are some people who didn't sign in. And yes, if you please haven't sign signed in. in, please make sure that you put your name, address, or uh, no, just name, phone number, and email on the sign in sheets. Uh, Linda Papanopoulos has one here, and I think there's still one in the front. We, we need that. So for the 29th, we're going to send emails out to everybody with the time and the place. And then we will also select people to sit on the panel to ask some questions and also you can email back some of the critical questions that you may want to be addressed but again I want to thank each and every one of you I appreciate you hopefully I've demonstrated a level of leadership here and that we can stay together